holds a bachelor's degree in general agriculture from July University College of Lyon, a master's degree in agricultural economy from the University of and a PhD degree in agricultural economic University of Illinois. He is a member of prominent global organizations and the recipient of various international awards, including award of honorary professor by the Mongolian University of Science and Technology, honorary scholar at the University, Doctor of Philosophy, honorary scholar at the University, honorary distinguished visiting professor at Shanghai University. We must always be responsive to changing needs and changing times. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to present to you a My name is Jimmy B. I've been an AfriCell subscriber for a very long time. AfriCell had promised to be the cheapest operator with the best service. True to their promise, AfriCell is now introducing unbeatable data prices. Cheaper prices with still the same fast download speed. Yes, it's massive reduction in AfriCell data bundle. It's huge beyond your imagination. It's the biggest reduction in AfriCell data bundle in the history of telecommunications in Sierra Leone. It's fast, affordable, and lasts longer. AfriCell gives you 3 megabytes for 400 Leons. But others, 450 Leons. 75 megabyte with AfriCell is 8,000. So today, I am sure. I am sure when it comes to Sierra Leonean issues, Sierra Leonean issues, you, the faculty and staff of UNIMAC, and the students of UNIMAC probably know Sierra Leonean issues better than I do. So, as the professor said, it's a conversation. I don't come here with any preconceived notion that I have the magic bullets to say Sierra Leone. I come with ambition to make Sierra Leone great, but it cannot be done. It cannot be done by any one person. It cannot be done by any one person. It can only be done if you, all the citizens, particularly the young generation, come together to build a new nation, a nation that will be proud of. So this indeed is a conversation. I'll give you some ideas, but of course, I want to learn from you as well. 
and test your determination to really build a new great Sierra Leone. So let me test a few things, because this is an academic institution. I'll deliver a typical political speech here. So I'm using half of my academic brain and half of the political brain here tonight. So, and, and by the way, by the way, by the way, not many candidates, not many candidates can do that in this election. We are all not the same. Now, let me ask you something. How many of you in this room, very honest question, how many of you in this room is happy, very, very happy with the state of the economy of this country? Sub-Saharan Africa. Sierra Leone is one of those countries, particularly Sub-Saharan African countries, who seem that seem to be always at the bottom of the development index. Always. So people have been asking the question: Why are we Africans always? Academics have done a lot of research. Why are these set of African countries always behind in development? And there are many theories. Since you are academics, uh, you are in a, an academic institution, I'll just mention a few of what some people think. Why we are behind. But I am sure you have reasons why your country, Sierra Leone, is not where you expect it to be. But let me just explain to you some of what people say. Before we, before we talk about the future, what should happen? Some have said, perhaps the problem with Sub-Saharan Africa is the Garden of Eden Syndrome. What is the Garden of Eden Syndrome? This was first formulated by Ali Mazoui, Professor Ali Mazoui, back in the early 80s. I was a PhD student at that time. He said, perhaps the problem is, God gave us everything. Like Sierra Leone, right? Gold, diamond, bauxite, tantalite, iron ore, cocoa, coffee. Every season something grows. He said maybe because they had so much, like the Garden of Eden, their creativity did not develop much. That's not my theory. But that's what they said. But we are not the only ones with minerals, okay? Latin America has minerals. Some Asian countries have minerals. But they advance more than us. So maybe the Garden of Eden theory has some merit, but it means you can define, right? You can say, no, we want it better. We can industrialize. So one idea has been the Garden of Eden syndrome, that we have too much. So like the Garden of Eden, we just pick from the tree and eat. We don't add any value. Another one is called the geographic determinism explanation. 
geographic determinism. One version of this thesis is presented by the, the author, Jared Diamond, in the, in the book, Guns, Germs, and Steel, in an article, Guns, Germs, and Steel, 1997, which is that a country's wealth and success depends on its geographic environment and topography. Certain environments are easier to manipulate than others, as such societies to domesticate plants and animals while relative, with relative ease, while others cannot. In other words, your geography determines whether you can advance. Do you agree to that? I would say not necessarily. I lived in Austria for 17 years. They are landlocked, but they are amongst the richest countries in the world. Japan probably has no minerals, right? Singapore. But they use their brain. They advance. But again, that's a theory from some others. They call it geographic determinism. Ah, there's another one. The poverty trap. This thesis comes from Professor Paul Collier. Paul Collier comes to Sierra Leone a lot. He was the uh, head of the Center for the African uh, Center for African Studies and African Economies at Oxford University, senior economist at the World Bank and also DFID. Here's what he says about Africa in particular in his book, The Bottom Billion. That's the bottom poorest billion of the world. Paul Collier believes that conflict is one of the four poverty traps that keeps these one billion people, a lot of them in Africa, behind when others are advancing. And he says, conflict is one, but the others being landlocked, especially when neighboring countries are also poor, ah, he says, when they have abundant minerals, and of course, abundance, he says. So he gives four reasons, conflict, landlocked, too much minerals, bad governance. Those apply here. We are not landlocks, right? But we have a lot of minerals. We are supposed to be rich. Do we have bad governments? Maybe. Another theory, the fourth one, is from a young economist. When she came out with her book, I was then a big director general at the UN, and she shocked the world. She had a young Zambian PhD graduate. She was a student of Professor Paul Collier. She wrote a book, Dead Aid. And of course, we were all shocked. She became a hero already, CNN, BBC, an African woman challenging the orthodoxy of development. And at that time, I was a short in development. She had thesis is because we receive so much aid, we're always begging somebody to come and solve our problems. And they give us all this money. We refuse to we refuse to be advanced. We refuse to take responsibility. So she said, stop the aid. Let them start fending for themselves and be creative and lift themselves up. They are all Africans. Because she was an African, right? She said Africans seem to always be dependent on aid. Wow. She caused chaos. I met her in New York. And I said, my sister, the first time I met her, I said, how dare you? She said, yes, so you can talk in the past. And I was impressed, because this is a young African PhD lady challenging people like me. And we were on the same panel that day. You know what she She beat me in a debate. She was not good. Fresh PhD. But I was sitting there saying, gosh, I wish this was a Sierra Leonean woman. And of course she became clear. But do you think in Sierra Leone we are too dependent on AIDS? Do you think we have this receivership mentality? Thank you. 
is now, I just saw last week, ranked amongst the five poorest countries of the world. Are you proud of being amongst the worst? Lowest common denominator? Of course not. But then, I gave you about five now. Then another report came in the 90s. They said, let's put these theories aside. Perhaps one of the main reasons, one of the main reasons why sub-Saharan African countries are behind. A group of researchers said the main reason could be bad governance and corruption. Bad governance and corruption. Because it was hard for these development acts experts to accept that people can keep blaming colonialism for over half a century when others who were colonized are now second world. Malaysia was not as rich as Ghana or Sierra Leone when they had independence. But they are all almost first world. India was colonized too. Vietnam, Cambodia, they had conflict worse than our conflict. But they are better than us. So people said, hey, this blame game should stop. These Africans must look at themselves, look inside their soul, and admit that they have governed themselves bad, and a good number of them had been corrupt, stealing our wealth and keeping it elsewhere. So they said bad governance and corruption must be a fundamental reason. Now I give you six. When we, when we have a conversation, you decide which one of those six fits your country. Because 99% of you said you don't like your condition of your country and you don't like your personal condition. So that's part one of our discussion, right? So we move to part two. <laughs> Professor said it's a conversation. So you will tell me why you think your country is backward and we'll talk about how we change it together. Part two, NGC, National Grand Coalition. Because most of the population in this country, probably 
you are below 35. Your, the future belongs to you. So you must be the first of building that new Sarah new that we are going to talk about soon. What should it look like? What should it happen? Nobody can do it for you. Don't blame somebody else. Yes, bad governance has been there. You be part of creating good governance. If the past was bad, create that future that was good. That is the NGC. We came up with a new umbrella, a new platform for people who have never been in politics to come forward. And we have many here and also in the diaspora who have never been in politics. But in addition to all the folks, old people in the old Alusan and al generation that are not happy with their condition, that don't accept is your destiny. Don't accept that kleptocracy is reward in life. So believe that we can create another new nation from zero. And guess what? As we speak today, we have 504 council or candidates out of 511. No other party apart from Alusan and Alusan Kutun. It shows that innovation can work. People thought it was impossible. Yes. But we're matching them from Prubola to Koinu. Second, as of today, we will find 128 parliamentary candidates. Out of 132, we chose to leave who were strategic. But I just want you to believe you, the young generation. Don't listen to naysay. People told me, oh, in career, don't finish. We don't left Alassan, so better not this. I defy them. I defy that garden of evil, evil syndrome. We created something new. You understand? So I'm just giving you an example that yes, I chose to defy the orthodoxy with a group of other people. And we're giving a new platform for all of us to define that new feature. So I'll talk about 10 building blocks. Why do I call them 10 building blocks? To create a new Sierra Leone, there's no one answer. And that's one more. There is no one simple solution. So much is wrong. So much is wrong. In development, when you waste five years, you waste a decade or two decades. In the third decade, you have to do everything. You have to rebuild education, healthcare, governance, infrastructure, everything. Because you didn't do what you were supposed to do before. That's the condition we're going to be in. Where are we today? Over 2 billion in debt. You have to pay it. You have to pay it. By 2006, we were maybe 2-300 million. Today, people borrowed on your behalf about 2 billion dollars. Don't you want to know what they did with it? Do we have a Donald Trump in this country that was already a billionaire? No. Don't you want to know? for you that you have to pay in the future you want to know so where are we today our debt external and internal is over two billion where are we today we are still ranked as one of the three worst hungry countries in the world that's not me that's that was the worst place to be a youth over hundred thousand mortalities in here is that the Sierra Leone you're proud of this is not me that's gonna be a joke Ah, you look at the corruption index and so on. What am I trying to tell you? You have to know where we are beginning. So where you want to go. Yes, now we have videos done by white people. To polish the image of the last 10 years. That you are happy. That you all are happy. The roads are fantastic. And you take the roads to your home. To sleep hungry. But you are happy. That you leave university after three years, you have no job, but you are happy. Market women go to the market to say they can leave their houses, but they are happy. Is that true? Do you need somebody to take your money, pay public relations companies in England to come and convince you that when you graduate, you are happy even if, even if you don't have jobs? You need somebody from Europe a lot of money i think they're from eastern europe you can hear the accent on the videos so convince you that this country is not at the bottom of the heap that 70 percent of the population is not living below two dollar fifty a day
you need somebody to convince you about that just go to the market go to the uh, 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 slums you see poverty you see lack of lack of uh, um availability of amenities water and so on so you know where we are coming from now let's talk about where we want to go because you need that baseline right i gave you theory one third i gave you theory of where we were Oh. Ah, it's the yeah, the antenna. So it's for the TV. All right, I have to be a talking head. So we started with theory. Why we and what we decided to fix? What is what is it? Who the candidates were? And I gave you our condition now, but we've made some progress. We are the country that sued for peace after the war. We live in harmony today. We built a new democracy, right? It's still maturing, but it will mature in, in due course. So there are some successes we've had. I'm just saying the propaganda that you all have is not true. And I tested it in this room now. So where will we go? What will NGC do for you? I give you 10 building blocks. The first thematic area is good governance and social sector development. That's one thing. The second thing is economic growth and competitiveness. The third one, social justice and human security. Let me take the first, the first four building blocks. The new Sierra Leone must, must have good governance. It must have good governance. It must invest in social development, must. Why good governance? My brothers and sisters, if the leadership is not right, you remain backward. I told you some of the theories earlier. If the leadership is not visionary, committed to the common people, and put salon force, we will remain behind. So this is why for us, thematic area one is good governance. We will fight corruption. We have to fight corruption. We estimate in NGC that 60 million to 100 million is lost in this country just because people literally steal it. You give them money to build a school, they chop half. You give them money to bring clean water, they steal it. But you know our society celebrates those people. They build the big houses, they have the best jeeps, and yes, we dance behind them. So what do they do? They go back and steal. We celebrate those people, not the professors or the thinkers, not the engineers or the doctors, but the guy who steals the most and builds four houses overnight. We say this is a bio. If, if we don't fix that, if we don't fight that corruption, we can't move forward. So number one, we have to fight it. How? We, the leadership, must be ready to, be, to have integrity. It starts from the top. You set the tone. Yes, regularly we declare our assets. I agree with what the citizens manifest today. Regularly, we we show you what we have. So, can they Kela, before you came in, maybe you had so much. Great. We know there will be capital gains. We expect that in five years you'll have so much. So, if I have five times that amount, will ask me oh, and we have to do it for everybody. But what do we see today? A kleptocracy. A handful of people own almost everything in this country. Let me tell you, the last day of parliament, 7th of December 2017, while you were sleeping in McKinney, they were approving bills in your parliament. They approved some companies that you've never heard of. You've never heard of people here. Two of those companies are giving your minerals to a set of people in this country. Tell me, in, since colonial days, did any Sierra Leonean's father own a mine in this country? Did any Sierra Leonean own bauxite? Well, very soon some will. But that belongs to you. It belongs to you. 
they formed companies already quickly why because they're used to doing it for 10 years and nobody asked them that corruption a handful of people grab who don't know their company it belongs to them you gotta challenge that but it is complicity because the parliament approved it so you see how bad corruption is it's not one man it's a group but it is also the governance structure that approves corruption the constitution says to seem a trisim no for be parliamentarian it's for the minister not, not also the constitution says to seem trisim for sim not for be parliamentary not also. but we just found out now this week last week that it is the law those who were appointing them who know the law better than you and me they say they're fine corruption is also when you use the constitution the wrong way to go after people that's corruption that's corruption so so the new sierra leone the new sierra leone that you and i the new Sierra Leone that you and I will create. The new Sierra Leone that you and I will create will have no reserve domains for the corrupt. We will plug the holes. We will plug the holes where people easily steal the money that was meant for the schools and the hospitals. To put the toilets in the schools, to pay the nurses, we'll plug that hole. Point number two, we will invest in call a social sector accelerator program. Healthcare will invest big. Ebola taught us something that we were told that the healthcare system in Sierra Leone is great, that it is free medical because they built it well. Ebola came, it wiped it out. It showed the fragility, the fragility of that sector. We have to invest heavily in healthcare. Our dream in NGC is to build at least one first class hospital in every region. We take, we take people, we take people to Ghana to test. I have to take somebody there soon to Ghana to test. We could do it here. In fact, there was a time I discussed that with President and by Kuruma because next to me in the UN was the Atomic Energy Agency. They can train countries and help them build capacity to do cancer tests initial stages. So I know we can do it here. I will not build mighty party offices for you to see. I'll build hospitals. Number three, education. Education. No nation, no nation will advance without good education. I assure you, the NGC, the future we want to build, the moment we take over, we declare an education emergency. Education emergency. Why is it an emergency? The system is broken. We have sexually transmitted grades. We have people graduating from secondary school that cannot write an essay. We have people graduating, they can't work in factories. We have people graduating in disciplines. Nobody will hire them. We will change that. We will review the curricula. The curricula has to fit the job market. We want change. We'll bring change. We want change. And we'll bring it. We'll bring it. It is not fair. It is not fair that our children have and their parents have to look for 500,000 just to get an application for. We'll, we'll abolish it. And I hope further. I hope further in Unimac as Unimac already has online registration i hope we make it online it is possible so we abolish those payments of unnecessary fees 
We will invest in vocational technical education. We need the Vortex system. We need better plumbers, better electricians, and others who can work well in the artisanal sector and on factories. We will depoliticize education. There is too much political interference in education. So our faculty cannot focus enough on academic excellence. You have a long list of PhDs, honorary PhDs I have received around the world. It is because the foundation was built in Serion. It is because Jala University and CKC, FSSG and others gave me a good grounding. Teaching, they value roads where they can steal money. So that is education. You will see more details, but those are the highlights. Thank you very much. We're still on governance and social sector, the theme one, right? So I'll rush now and go to the next. But those are all ideas we build together. Yeah? And we will establish special programs for the disabled, the women, but particularly a special fund for youth entrepreneurship. The government cannot create jobs for everybody. It is not possible. Let nobody fool you. Not all of you can be civil servants. But we need to give you the tools in schools and universities so you can start your own businesses. So a special focus, special programs on entrepreneurship and uh, young, uh, small and medium enterprises. So that is for governance. I touched on corruption, accountability. I touched on uh, um, health. I touched on education. Yeah, and I explained a little bit. So I said that theme is governance and social sector. The next one, the next category is economic growth and competitiveness. Everything I have said cannot be done if your economy is not growing. Your economy has to grow. The African Union, when they were looking at their vision 2050, 2060, their recommendation is that if African countries want to advance, they have to grow at about 7% or so on the Nepal. We need to grow fast. But the growth has to be real. When they were bluffing that we were growing at 21%, those of us who are good economists knew that that was just that year. That's why. Suddenly you export a lot of iron ore this year, boom, you start advertising that you are the fastest growing economy. You are building sand castles in the air. It's going to crash. It's going to crash. So to anchor our economy, we need economic diversification. We have seen the danger of depending on iron ore alone. When iron ore prices crashed, till now we're in the bottom, right? So we have to diversify. Agribusiness, investing in our farmers, but all the supply chain up to marketing. We gotta do that. Tourism, but also the digital economy. I want you to be like the Kenyans and the Ghanaians. Now they're investing in IT systems. Their children are making software for American companies. That's brain power. The good news, one of our Sierra Leoneans who graduated last year from MIT, David Sengen, is one of the lead researchers in Kenya. I met him at MIT when I went to the lecture. I was so proud that one of the top students in engineering was a Sierra Leonean, David Sengen. He is now helping Kenya. A man I say to myself, great, he's learning a lot with IBM now leading in Kenya. When I win, I bring a man like that to so say, David, tell IBM to come here so that our Sierra Leoneans will create the new technologies for them. That's investing in the digital economy. We also have to invest in what we call the creative industries. One of the good things that President Kaba did was to encourage our local artists. It's really great to go to parties in Europe and America. And for five hours, the only thing they play is Sierra Leonean music. Any genre, reggae, calypso, R&B, and of course our own typical music here. Our artists are all of those genres. So yes, we have to invest in the creative industries. A good policy 
on the music industry, but helping them now go digital. We got to do it. Yes. So our own, our one and only, Cow Dinero, famous, MRC and others, they can even go global bigger. We got to invest in them. So I talked about economic diversification there. Agribusiness, tourism, the digital economy. We will expand trade. We have to expand trade. We must trade with the rest of the world. Today we have a huge deficit. We import more than we export. So we have to look very closely at how we support our local companies to export more. Because that gives us foreign exchange. It makes us less dependent on minerals alone. But you know, we need to know how much we're getting from the minerals. We need to know. We will publish for you revenues so you know how much we make. Let me go back to governance. I forgot one thing. We will publish regularly. When we give money to ministries or to contractors, we will publish their names. We will tell you which projects we gave them money for, so you can also check whether they deliver the projects. Because the habit for the last 10 years is, you give the contractor the money, he takes some, he gives to the party, he gives to the guy who gave him the contract, and he doesn't build the structure. It is part of economic management, but it's also part of governance. So you want to know, who did we give the money to build the school? What kind of school? Who did we give the money for the water well? Where was he supposed to do it? So you will also be the economic police. So I talked about diversification. I talked about trade as well. And I talked about the creative industries. Of course, of course, we need cost effective. And I emphasize, cost of effective value for money, energy and infrastructure projects. I emphasize cost effective value for money. You know what has been happening the last 10 years? We are told that we have a lot of roads. Yes, roadway all side. But the roadway for B1 million, they make a 4 million. The roadway for B5 million, they make a 19 million. Who that get the balance? Those of you who are economic students here, you know sometimes when you have a fixed budget, we call it a zero sum game zero-sum game those of you in the social sciences we talk about trade-off when you do this something else has to go we also in economics talk about opportunity cost when the road for be half million per kilometer you make a four million per kilometer that balance money for use for build school and toilet or somebody chopper so i emphasize value for money the accounting students will tell you what that means. It's not just to have roads. You can build roads and steal the money. You can build substandard roads. When you leave, we see the potholes after five years. Because why? The contracts were not granted properly. It was not meant for the road. It was meant for the chopping. We call it leakages in economics. People create projects so there will be leakages. So there will be leakages. So the objective, I know people in Freetown, I know people in Freetown who claim that they are building roads in Kailau. One, they not get civil engineering degree, but they are building roads. So the last category, so the last one, about the future, last category, social justice and human security. And that's where I will end. Your university, a premier Catholic university, I am sure, apart from sustainable development, the science and other disciplines they've taught you, I am sure that they've also taught you about social justice, human rights, ethics, what is right and what is wrong. If you don't have your rights protected, you're a slave. If you don't have freedom, Freedom to think, freedom to achieve your potential, you're still a slave. And here in this country, people want to make us victims of mental slavery. We should not think anymore. We should accept everything they do, and they make propaganda, even when the road is 
is not as good as they claim. We have to dance behind them. When they create false company and take our minerals, we have to celebrate. And they say Tolumbo. <laughs> no. Justice. One of the areas we will invest, we will invest heavily in reforming the judiciary. We need your rights protected. We need you to sleep at night knowing that if somebody wrongs you, there will be justice. This society needs justice. Since I came to this country, you know, the Ambassador Dabo, we've been to the courts many times. We, were, we did it to show that at the end of the day, the rule of law must prevail. The rule of law must prevail, but it has to be preserved. We will invest in a judicial reform. We're talking to a lot of judges and lawyers now, what it should be like. We will invest in our security services, the police and the army. These are honorable men and women who want to protect us. We need protection, but they should serve the people of Sierra Leone. We will make them professionals. We'll invest in their service and make them even better professionals, the police and the military, because they have families too. They want to sleep at night. They want a country that is growing. And so finally, I've said a lot. I gave you several ideas on the three themes, and I summarize. Governance and social sector investment, economic diversification and growth, several ideas, and then finally, I talked about social justice and social mobility as well. Well, this is what the NGC is looking at now. We're putting our manifesto together. We'll be going around it. We're looking at the citizens' manifesto to take some of the ideas for clean water, better health care, lowering uh, uh, um, 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 maternal mortality and infant mortality. All of that we will see under these big things. Healthcare, I just gave you a quick start, but we'll be doing a road show with our manifesto. Now, how will you want to build your own country? This is our idea. I thank you and change is coming. God bless you. I 
call you. You will give us your name and uh, ask your question. Yes. And okay. Yes. And. Question. If there is a lady, I'll give it to the ladies. Hmm? I'll give it to the ladies. Yes, the, the, the gentleman in the coat. Yeah. No, well, I have not seen a lady yet. Your name and ask a question. Yeah. My name is Mohammed Robinson to say. Come on, they call me for downtown. Our candidate is for the NJC presidential elections. You mesmerize us with your eloquent speech here. We can understand. You, as an ambassador of our beloved nation, you've deigned. Wine with all power shakers, with all movers of the world. Question, please, and tell us your I'm coming to the question. Yes, please, we are on radio. I haven't heard all your sweet, sweet thoughts. I am a youth champion. My question here you, can you look us into our face and guarantee us as the Ionians if we give you this county to champion for us? Next five years, guarantee us that you're going to give us a level playing field where we will break the barriers between development and politics. What is your game plan on that? Thank you. Yes, Eddie. Yeah, the lady. Hello, the lady. I am in the department of Hello, shall we listen please? I am in the Department of Development Studies year 3. Thank you very much, Doctor. The question is that you have spoken about many developmental factors, different sectors that we, we want to improve the health sectors, the educational sector, and a lot. The question I want to ask is that if by any means you did not succeed to become president of this country, what is the future for Sierra Leoneans? Because, because the political atmosphere in Sierra Leone is somehow dynamic. It does change it. Maybe you cannot be lucky to be president of this country. To know your activities, Sean, if by any means you did not win these elections. Thank you. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, before I go to the question first, we are on radio and television. Yes. I'd like to, I would like to thank, um, hello, ladies and gentlemen, we do not have the luxury of time, we are on radio and television. Please let us have silence. Thank you very much. Before I go to the question, I would first of all like to, um, Show to Dr. Kande Yunkera that um, a game with us, I had him spoke of a zero sum game, but I understood it from a pathetic view that a game with a saddle point is requires no expertise. And I have a few questions for him. One is this As the Alliance, um, the pains of war, Ebola, and mudslide, we suffer together. 
You denied our citizenship then and took an oath of allegiance to the state. With due respect, sir, how can they define? Please listen. Listen, listen. Listen, please. With due respect, sir. Hello. Patriotism and love for country. That is one. Two, we acknowledge, we acknowledge the positive geometric trajectories of development and the challenges you still have. What have you done in your stay on top of authority in the United States to change or control this dynamism? Holding command to the contentious Bank Asoka. The final one is this. Uh, in your slogan, sir, you said Salo, Salo first. Where were you when our country was in pain and strong agony? So my opinion, it's ironical. Okay. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we listen? What I'll do if there is continuous noise, I will just give them the, and then the program will stop. Yes. Hello. Hello. Yes, buddy. Hello? That is the last question. Doctor, thank you very much for honoring the invitation to UNIMAC. I am particularly happy that you are here. I was sitting right at the middle of the hall when you indicated, when you indicated. understand when you indicated that the NGC is a new vision I am particularly worried and fearful as a Syrian about the newness of your vision following the fact that until the last quarter of last year you were busy fighting for the flag leadership of SLPP, which is a very open party in this country. Yet, you are talking of a new vision. Doctor, look at the list of all people who can refer to us, the founders of NGT. It is not big in history, because it's as recent as yesterday, that in fact, you are not of the formative stage of NGC. Yet you are here, yet you are here selling us of a division. Mr. Tapasa, the new show. When I look at the people you have, when I look at them, but my question is. I'm um, going to 
station. Let me just, let me ask you about Wait, wait, wait.
world peace. Some two police officers have been 
world to put everything in order. So in the meantime, please join us now. Thank you. Your country well but remember tomorrow tomorrow i'm going to be nominated also for member of parliament in cambia so i will be the only presidential candidate who is running for parliament and also running for president i am trying to President, what will you do? You tell I can answer that question because I have a profession. Number three, my brother who was here, I had dual nationality when there was Ebola. I asked you to go and go when there was Ebola. Here, times I returned to Sierra Leone full time in August of 2015 before. So I came back here. You all and by Romanos, President and by Romanos, that when Ebola was destroying our country, it was Kande Yukel who connected him by phone to talk to Blieto Director General. to talk to the director of Ebola because he needed to know the facts. He needed to be more serious than his minister was telling him. So I was with you do Ebola. For you do Ebola. In fact, in fact, I did more than others. So say, say, so we were here to fight Ebola. So yes, I am proud of that. I was asked about the last question that caused the problem. Let me tell this to all of you. I believe you should give an opportunity to express himself. If you want change, if you want change everybody should be heard. If you want change, everybody should be heard. I want to say to my brother, come back here 
and ask me your question. Come back. Come back here and ask me your question. That is democracy. But, 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 you should also respect. You should respect the process. Don't make it be asking a question. But one of the fundamental questions he asked was why did I leave SLPP and create something? It is because SLPP was old. SLPP is old school. SLPP was not democratic. So we created the new National Grand Coalition. Do you want change? must come. We want change. 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 Okay, I think. All right, with that. Okay, so all of you, all of you who are change agents, take your. All of you who are change agents, New Sierra Leone, the New Sierra Leone must have order. The new. So I'm coming to you because leadership means that I should encourage you. The new Sierra Leone wants order. We want discipline. So I ask you, if you, if you want change, if you want change, go back to your seat. If you want change, go back to your seat. Well, I think. All right. But if you want change, you should be seated. I know you're excited. I think, Father, we can run. Well, I want to thank you. I'll be back. But please, next time, next time, in the new Sierra Leone, even if you don't like somebody's opinion, even if you don't like their opinion, let them say their piece. And you debate with them. That is what I will encourage you. That is the way you learn. That is the way you innovate. So I thank you very much. Change will come. God bless you. Hello. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yumkela. This is an academic forum. What the person is saying, you may not like it, but he has. I want to call on